attention. <laughs> Hi, it's Steve Hargadon, and this is the final keynote of day two. What a wonderful thing for the Global Education Conference. Uh, we have um, Margaret Atkinson and Amanda Lanasek. Close? Yes, very close. <laughs> Lana Check. Lana you know. Check. Well, I, that, was, that would have been my second guess. Anyway, they're here. We're delighted to have them here. Uh, I'm going to turn the time over to them, and I'll stick around and help answer questions or anything like that that comes up. All right. Okay. Well, we, we so appreciate y'all being here and joining us this evening. It's so exciting. I mean, Amanda and I were just talking about this, and we see that Eileen, who is part of, who was our our president of the PLN, is here. So just we could not wait to share the power of the PLN and what that means for global collaboration. So I'm Amanda Lanachek. I'm from Texas. I'm an instructional coach at a middle school here in Texas. And I am Margaret Atkinson. I teach middle school in South Louisiana, and um, the teenagers are joyful. <laughs> it's just so great to be with everybody and learning so much with everybody. So uh, Amanda's going to be sharing the screen with you. I'm going to be trying to keep up with comments. So please, if you can, if you can't tell, um, because I know there have been so many great presentations thus far. I mean, it's only like Steve was saying, it's only day two and it's just like, oh my gosh, all of these wonderful people have all of these great ideas. And so Amanda and I are definitely going to touch on some ideas about global collaboration. But what we more want to talk about is just the power of how we're going to be able to um, connect and make those connections to then start that further collaboration. Uh, so this is going to be just us talking through and very informal. And so if you want to ask a question, please ask a question. And Amanda and I have some jokes, but not really, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, it's everything is serendipitous and we're just are so excited to be here. So. Yes. All right. I'm going to share my screen. And while we are doing this, um, this is going to be housed in our ISTE Global PLN Wakelet. Uh, and we can talk about that more at the end when we kind of ask for questions. If you've never heard of a PLN, if you've never heard of ISTE, if you've never heard of Wakelet, um, that's going to be all what we want to talk about and want to make sure that, you know, you guys know exactly how you can share with each other and learn from each other. Um, Hey, Lucy, it's so good to see Lucy too on this call. Uh, Lucy, as we are getting our slides, uh, sharing the screen, it was doing it earlier. Um, as we are doing that, Lucy, just thank you so much for all of your hard work um, and all of your willingness to bring all of these great visionaries together. All right, Margaret, can you see the Google Slides? I can see the Google Slides. It's not, okay. just it's not, not letting me present for okay. some reason. It keeps saying trying to connect. So. We can just go with it this way until, for whatever reason, it decides <laughs> to connect. Uh, you know, what, what would an online conference be without technical difficulties? Right? And then it's exactly what we tell, what I tell my students all the time, is just you're flexible. You go with it. Um, and so, again, Lucy and uh, Steve, thank you so much. And let's talk a little bit about the human connection, right? First of all, it's so great to meet y'all. So if you want to shout out in the chat where you're from or what you teach or who you are, we would love to see that. We would love to talk to you about that. Amanda's on the tech side. I'm on the question side. I'm on the comment side. Um, so I think that connections begin starting points of anything that's great. And there we go. We got North Carolina. Thank you, Steve. Um, but Amanda and I, you know, our story is beautiful and wonderful, and it starts with ISTE, which is what we are going to talk about specifically, and then kind of go more broad for global collaboration. Um, we have somebody from Pennsylvania. Hey, AP Human Geography, that is amazing. Um, and of course, you help people, Steve. Um, hi, Ta hi, Judy, and you're from hi Taiwan. Oh, that's so wonderful. Vancouver, um, wonderful. Okay, so Amanda. You want yes. to talk a little bit about how we met and kind of that connection, that serendipitous, beautiful thing? Yes, absolutely. So um, Margaret and I met at ISTE, I want to say 2015 or 16 in San Antonio. Um, the 
PLN, the ISTE Global PLN has an annual scavenger hunt. And so Margaret was one of the participants in the scavenger hunt and we were able to have a face-to-face -face connection then. But before that, we had met online and we were following each other on Twitter and through um, a larger PLN called the Edge of Match. Um, we were collaborating with each other and being able to connect. So it was nice to finally meet each other face-to-face -face and our friendship and working relationship has just evolved tremendously over the years. Um, Margaret became a part of the ISTE Global PLN and we've just really continued working together to share our passion for global collaboration with everyone we can share it with. And so that working relationship really evolved into a friendship. And so that's the beauty of PLNs is you start with this working relationship and you build these connections. And we were like, wait, you're in Louisiana. I'm in Texas. We're close. And even though we're state by state, you all know Texas is humongous. So we're still hours and hours away from each other, but we stay in contact daily. And it's just been a really amazing uh, friendship. And that's you couldn't have said it better. Starting with that professional and then moving towards this friendship is how I think collaboration can start, right? Because it feels really overwhelming. And if you go to the next slide, um, and we're meeting everybody from Cairo to Vancouver to San Jose. I saw two people from San Jose, Amanda. That's pretty neat. So that's now we're awesome. 16 attendees. Yeah. So again, thank you. And if you want to share your Twitter handle or however you connect on social media, please be able to share that. We'll share ours later. Um, Lucy, thank you so much for putting the ISTE web, uh, website up. And I think with collaboration, you can't do anything unless you, or you can't do as much if you do it alone as, as if you do it together. And I love that quote from Helen Keller. And so um, what the point of our presentation is, is to show you to make those human connections because collaboration can be really scary. And it always helps when you know the person or when you have some sort of relationship with them and you're able to build on that and you spark an idea and it's like, hey, let's go. Um, I am just so grateful for all of these opportunities that we're going to talk about in the presentation. They all have some sort of personal connection and I've cultivated that personal connection with them um, because of just working together and with that, it makes it less scary. So um, I really encourage us to continue to have this professional learning network. Lucy put that in the um, chat. So thank you, Lucy, for that. Well, and we'll talk about that on the next slide. But what a professional learning network can become is exactly what Sarah Thomas, who is the founder of EduMatch says, a professional learning family. So from this working together in a professional setting, you can become friends, you can become ultimately family. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the PLN what it is, what ISTE is, um, what's going on there. So this is a really great graphic. It's part of graphics from ISTE. If in case you've never heard of ISTE, it's the International Society for Technology and Education. Um, and neat story, Amanda, do you remember when you met Lucy? Um, I, I think the first time was this year online. I, I, for several years, we've been following each other, but I think the first time face-to-face -face was this year. I know I'd seen her and Steve at ISTE, but I had never had that face-to-face -face, uh, communication with them. And that is what is so great. So this vehicle, this PLN, this PLN through this technology organization helped us connect with Lucy, helped us connect with Steve. I've been going to Steve's presentations at ISTE um, for the past three or four years. I think the first year that I met you, or not his presentation, but the unconference before the ISTE. And then when I saw Lucy this past summer, it was just like, oh my gosh, everybody is so amazing. This is so great. So had we not have those personal connections again we might not i might not have had the courage to present and reach out and 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 be willing to be a part of this because it's just like oh it's so scary but with that relationship it can be less scary so ISTE has these professional learning networks and there I, we listed a couple on the on the right hand side we of course are global collaboration um i mean what are some others that you are a, a fan of specifically um, I really like the Digital Citizenship and Teachers Education Network. The Teachers Education Network, uh, Rochelle Dean Poth does a really good job of sharing resources and they have book studies. Um, 
I'm also a member of the instructional, instructional technology coordinators network and they share lots of great resources. And what I love about these PLNs um, through ISTE is anytime I have a question, I can just jump into ISTE connects and ask and put it in the discussion board and you get an answer. And most of the time you get answers from all over the place and um, multiple, you know, variations of things you can implement in your schools, in your classrooms. So it's, it's just an amazing network. And so the Global Collaboration PLN, we um, started, and I've only, this is my fourth year as a member, but the Global Collaboration PLN started, I believe, seven years ago, six to seven years ago. And um, Lucy was one of the, the founding leaders on the Global Collaboration PLN, and they did amazing work um, pushing us to where we are now. And it's just phenomenal, the, the connections that have been made through the ISTE Global Collaboration Network. Uh, part of that network allows you to be able to do different things. And I just, we kind of snipped some graphics from ISTE just so you could see the membership itself. Um, you can use leadership and networking opportunities and that's basically what is life, right? Networking, being able to make those connections, have that leadership. Um, you have, uh, on-demand resources, you have webinars, you have events that are hosted by different PLNs, um, you have Twitter chats, you have um, all of the things that, that come together with a professional organization, and it's all right there at your fingertips whenever you want through ISTE. And Lucy just said that the, the founding members were, or more founding members were Julie Lindsay and Ann Merchant, who is presented earlier today, in case you missed that, we gave her a shout out later. Um, so just the fact that seven years in, the PLN has been able to continuously develop and cultivate relationships is something that I am so humbled to be a part of as we continue to work together. Um, so in case you are not familiar with PLNs or with leadership, on the next slide that we have, it's our uh, leadership team. And just to kind of give you a face with a name for the people who, um, if you are engaging with us on social media, and that's just it. If you are not interested in joining ISTE, no big deal, right? If you're not interested in um, uh, formally joining it, that's not a big deal. Um, instead, why don't you look on Twitter if you want or follow the hashtag because there's always great stuff that's shared, not only by the official PLN uh, Twitter handle, but also by these great leaders. And since we're a global collaboration PLN, we certainly have people who are all over the world. Um, Amanda and I are from Texas. Eileen is on this right now. She's in uh, Kuwait. Yes. Um, so we have people from six different countries represented on the leadership team. And it's pretty amazing. I, I have personally learned so much about Kuwait from Eileen the past three years that I would have never you know, had the opportunity to learn. And the same with Anne from Australia and just how alike and different our schools are and the education in different parts of the world. Cause it's very e easy to get siloed into, you know, your location and this is what education looks like. But it's, it's been amazing to collaborate and uh, connect with people in the PLN and find out what education all over the world looks like and, and how we can better education throughout the world, not just in our own hometowns. And obviously there are people, there are four, ten, there are 12 people. <laughs> Let's do some math. <laughs> there are 12 <laughs> people <laughs> on this graphic right now. Um, but the actual PLN has more than 2000 members. Um, at last count, I think it was like 22, 24. Um, and so what is exciting for me as part of the leadership team, and I know for Eileen and for Amanda, is that we're able to harness the energy of our members who might not necessarily feel like they are able to always have a voice, um, harness that energy and be able to really spotlight highlight, show how you can have collaborative projects, whether they're already built or how you can have that potential to build things in the future. Um, and Amanda had a really great idea. She did something really awesome last year that we'll talk about a little bit later. But these are the leaders, the current leaders. If you're interested and if you want to be part of that collaboration and if you want to be part of that leadership and if you have that vision, certainly join us and let's talk about leadership in the future because we want to make 
just like Amanda was saying earlier, to make such a difference in the world and to make such a difference in education, that the only way to do that is to really come together and work together to, to, to affect that change. So um, there's our beautiful, wonderful team. All right, so our focus this year in uh, the ISTE Global PLN is to really focus on connections versus collaboration on a global field. So we have found that in the past couple years um, at ISTE, we have an informal meeting where members can tell us like, what do you want from the PLN that we're not offering and, and how can we make your experience in the PLN better? And every year, people say, well, I know how to connect, but then how do I take it to that next step? So a lot of times it's easy to find connections online and connect with different classrooms or even you know classrooms in your same hometown that you're you're skyping with or doing google hangouts with but how do you truly collaborate and especially when it's on a global field so we've really tried to focus on that and we've asked for people to share what is global collaboration to them on a flip grid and so we've linked that flip grid here but we'll also share it out on twitter and it's also in the wakelet that we'll share at the end of um, this session. But our, with our focus between connections and collaboration, um, one of our members last year created a I want to connect Google form where you can put your information in and see information that has been added. So if I've added my classroom, you can see Amanda from Texas has six through eighth graders and she's, she wants to connect. And taking that first step of connection to then get to the collaboration piece. And we're gonna share some phenomenal global collaboration projects with you guys that members of our PLN and people, you know, that we stalk on Twitter are doing. And <laughs> these people are just amazing from all over the world doing great projects in their classrooms. And they're everyday teachers like you and me. And that is something that I think that I want to make sure that I encourage everybody to remember this conference, Lucy and Steve has have just assembled the A team of the people presenting on all these ideas. And we tweeted yesterday, if you just look at all the presentations on one day, it's like, oh my gosh, it can be really overwhelming, I think, to think, oh my gosh, can I not do that? But that's the beauty of it is that you can, we can, we just have to make those relationships with each other and continue to cultivate that. Um, one way we try to highlight people and highlight things that are going on is with our newsletter. Uh, so, Amanda, you want to talk a little bit about the s'more and how beautiful it is? Absolutely. So, every month, and we try to send it out on the 17th of each month to honor the UN Sustainable Development Goals. There are 17 of them. And um, we've really focused on the SDGs and global collaboration centered around the SDGs to make our world a better place by 2030. So in our newsletter, we highlight global events going on and we found through our membership, through our leadership team, like our friends that are in China are like, yeah, there's this happening in China and, you know, just being able to know what's happening and, and how you can get connected. I know that um, Margaret attended a conference last month and I was able to follow along on Twitter and through her periscopes, just like I was there and th that, you know, that's amazing that that can happen, that I can be involved in professional learning when I'm sitting on my, my couch with my dog. Um, but <laughs> other things that we highlight in our newsletter is we try to highlight a member of the month and um, just projects that are going on and how you can get involved. So we found that often, you know, if you read about a project, it, it's going to empower you to be like, my kids can do that too. You know, if these kids can do it, why can't mine? And just to give you those ideas of how to take that connection to collaboration. And I think you just said it. Oh, go back for a second. I think oh, you just sorry. said it. Sorry. No, sorry. Like, um, I think you just said that idea of if they, if those kids can do it, then my kids can do it. That affirmation is just so powerful being able to see and hear and know that you're in it together. Um, with the newsletter on the right, we're going to talk more about this, but there was a digital citizenship 
summit online, I would have never really felt again, confident enough to be like, Oh yeah, we can do that. But because of the PLN, because of those relationships, because of what um, is cultivated when you have those human connections and you know, you're going to glow, you know, that you're going to do it together because of that, my students were able to participate. And it was just this beautiful thing we'll talk about later. But um, I want you to really, I want y'all are so awesome. These y'all listening to this. I want you guys to really understand like that nothing can be done until you make that connection until you are, you see that other human. And so just don't ever under sell the idea that affirmation is important and seeing what other people can do is powerful. So, okay. Now on to Amanda's great, wonderful thing that she did. It was her vision last summer. It was not just mine. Um, it was, it was definitely a PLN effort. And so in May of last summer, we started talking about, man, we have all these amazing people that are doing these amazing things in their classrooms and we want them to share them with people. How can we do that? So we designed the ISTE Global Collaboration Network, Global Collaboration Summit, and it ran for 10 days and um, it began on June 10th and it was just an online digital summit. And of course, it's, it was not to the scale of, of this event by any means. And we just sent a daily email with information about what the project was and a 10 minute video so that people could watch and get what they needed and then have the resources to participate in that project or learn more about it or contact the presenter. And so it was, it was a great success and we plan on doing it again. Um, and we had, you know, the people that, were founders of this PLN like Julie Lindsay, who does amazing things with her flat connections to be able to share, to share those with, with our PLN again and um, with new members. And so it was a really great opportunity and we have everything archived on a Google site that is in our wakelet and also linked below. What was great too is you can't get enough, I think of digital, summits. You can't get enough of these digital conferences. Lucy and um, Steve, this conference is so great. All the resources that are there. This is another way to get resources and another way to harness that PLN. And so you have these groups that you're able to say and tap that town and be like, okay, yeah. So in the PLN, I know these people are, oh my gosh, look at this. And then when they start to cross, when your PLN start to cross, that's going to be great. So right now we have 15 people that now we've now started this global ed PLN, right? <laughs> global ed con PLN. So thank you, Lucy and Steve. All right. So we talked about these awesome projects that we see and um, that we found and people doing uh, just sharing through like hashtags like hashtag global ed and hashtag global ed 19. And then of course our hashtag is the global PLN. And we found these people not only just through Twitter, but through our PLN, uh, through ISTE connects and sharing what their projects were. And so we just wanted to talk to y'all a little bit about um, some of these amazing projects. So part of our next step in ISTE Global PLN is we realized we were, we were on ISTE Connect's website, we were on Twitter, but there's a lot of educators who, who aren't on Twitter. And so we tapped into Instagram. And instead of us putting the content out there, we have asked educators to take over. And it's been amazing seeing what these educators are doing in their classrooms and their students. And so they've shared ways that they're connecting and collaborating on a daily basis. And so we've seen things from uh, collaborating and connecting on Flipgrid to Skyping with people in different states and um, different countries and really centering their work around the SDGs. And so that, that has been great. And you can, you can follow us on Instagram. It's a work in progress. So it's, it's slow to start up, but we are definitely working on it. Um, one of our very own, he's one of our PLN leaders, Sean Forty. He makes amazing global collaborative um, flip grids. Most of it is centered around Flipgrid, but he designed for us a global chapter book using Boom Rider. And so I got to learn a lot about Boom Rider as, as a tool and an instructional tool and shared that with my ELA teachers. 
because Sean in Korea was able to tell me about it and introduce me to Boom Rider. So we thought about, we, we provide opportunities through the pill in to connect. And we, we've done a lot of flip grids and we've, we've, we've tried Twitter chats, but how to really help people with, through our avenue of the PLN to do something that was a global collaboration. So he designed a global chapter book and he's tweeted it out. We've tweeted it out and of course the information's on the wakelet, but so that classrooms around the world could collaborate on what, it, what is this book going to be about? And um, so we're really excited to see how that project turns out. And Sean also does um, some Flat Stanley projects where Flat Stanley travels around the world and to different classrooms. And, and I mean, you can check him out on Twitter. It's at Sean4D. And he just has really great projects. He does World um, Read Aloud Day, I believe. And um, he does that also on Flipgrid and has the opportunity for classrooms to hear voices all around the world. So, um, a person reads a different page and we're all, you know, all from different countries and then put that together in a video and kids get to hear voices. You know, a lot of our kids haven't heard different accents. And so to them, that is just phenomenal. Um, but he does amazing projects. So make sure to follow him and participate in our global chapter book if you're interested. And I'm pretty, and I, you might have said this, I'm sorry, I'm getting the Wakelet link, but you, um, that link should still be active. So if they get to his his Twitter page he can get on the they can get the link correct yes and we can drop a link to this whole presentation in the chat um, so they can have access to all these links yeah I'm doing that let me just drop the original link and then I'll put it in the uh, wakelet too all right and right. again I appreciate y'all you know <laughs> with, with the technical difficulties because Google still says trying to connect so we appreciate y'all you know seeing this view instead of the presentation view. So the next person that we want to highlight in the next project is Engineering Brightness, and that's Tracy Whiney and John Howe and all of their empowered students. And I'm gonna let Margaret talk about this because Margaret is who introduced me to Tracy. And Tracy was actually our ISTE uh, Global Collaboration Network Award winner at ISTE this year. And she was able to bring one of her student products and it, the, the whole story is amazing. She's a phenomenal, humble person. And so Margaret, tell us one, how did you meet her? And then tell us about her project. Okay, well, what a serendipitous experience. And I just remember that I have the, the light cell in my living room. I'm gonna see if somebody can grab it and bring it so we can show it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so my students have something called an education corporation. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but Tracy students, Engineering Brightness is student run. And it's this education corporation funded by this organization called Real World Scholars. So I was at ISTE a couple years ago and the Real World Scholars contest said, hey, Margaret, reach out to Tracy and John. They're there. And I said, okay, great. No big deal. And I went and we have just, we're, we were just fast friends from the very beginning. Um, what these students are doing, what Tracy and John and their community are doing is just mind blowing. They earned um, 100, the 100 uh, award, the 100 ambassadors and their award, their visionary education award. They've earned that. They have partnered with smart boards. Um, and smart board and they're able to communicate from their school in Colorado. They collaborate with a school in England and I think maybe one other place to build and actually design these solar lights so that they then can go fight um, light poverty in different countries. Um, it's the most beautiful story that you will ever hear because it's real and the students are making a difference. Um, and Tracy is always looking for other educators to collaborate. So if you tweet to her and if you say, hey, my students would love to be able to collaborate with your students and my students would love to be able to help design these lights or my students would love to be help, love to help maybe make our own lights and then have you guys help deliver them. We can, you can do that too. Um, I screenshotted, I don't know if you can see very well right now, but I screenshotted something from uh, John, uh, John, he's the assistant principal, I think of the school, um, of John's Twitter. And and the whole community comes in. It's not just Tracy and John leading this. It's not just the students. It is parents, 
grandparents, professionals in the community who are able to come in and help with this. And so everybody's learning together and it's true collaboration from Colorado to the rest of the world. And it's and really so, powerful. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 it's just really powerful. And there's that overlap of PLNs that I was talking about earlier. You know, it was a real world scholars contact with an ISTE moment and the two worlds just kind of collided and it was beautiful. And now Tracy is just, and she did a webinar, I think in September. Yes. She did a webinar for ISTE for RPLN, and so that's housed on our archives as well. So if you ever want to go back and watch that, you can do that as well. And one thing amazing when I met her at ISTE this year in Philadelphia was, I'm like, tell me all about your project. Tell me everything, you know, because it's phenomenal and mind-blowing to me that, that kids in Colorado are making these light cells that are being sent to Guatemala. And... Um, I believe they were originally made so that kids had light to read and then it has completely evolved and she said that one little girl told her students I need another light and I want it to be pink because I want my own light so when my brother's done reading I can read too and giving them ideas about like could we have a light that has two sides so when if we share a room when he's done he can turn off his side and I can continue reading so it's, it's promoted this love for reading in some of these students, but even more importantly, and just so amazing to me is that she said that the farmers have a coyote problem in, uh, the, in Guatemala. And so they have not only used these lights for reading, but they've put them out on their fences to deter the coyotes from, from eating their farm animals and disturbing their crops. And so, I thought, wow, that is, that's amazing. You made them for this, this one, you know, reason they collaborated with these kids and what do you need? And they made the lights for reading and then it has evolved into now farmers are using it to help ensure that their farms are safe. So it's just a phenomenal project. They're phenomenal people. And I, I highly encourage you to follow them on Twitter and, and read about their project and get involved. And I know we need to go on because I know we have such limited time but from that story that Amanda just told you, Tracy then continued and said, you know, there's some students who don't want to be engineers and who are not interested in being an engineer. And so she, she then said, look at this children's book that they wrote. And so some of the students were able to write a children's book. And then when they deliver, went to, on another delivery, they were able to translate it to Spanish. And so you have the writers, you have the artists, and then you have this multilingual book. It's just, it's just beautiful and and again it comes from those human relationships so yay all right next is world read aloud day and um do you want to talk about this one margaret sure of course world read aloud day is this amazing way through lit world it's initiative through lit world to be able to celebrate books follow the hashtags you can take pictures of yourself if you read aloud um you can take pictures of the day you can take pictures of the celebration and it's just a way for you to continue to see that literature transcends any culture that sharing transcends any culture and you can kind of feel like you're a part of it so the next one's going to be in february um february 5th 2020 uh, you can register your classroom and you go from there all right, and next, uh, the next person we want to highlight is Dr. Jen Williams, and Jen has been such an active participant in our PLN and has really helped us to empower some of our PLN members to take that next step from connection to collaboration. So she designed um, the Goals Project, which is a global classroom project where um, students are working towards the sustainable development goals with other students from around the country and I mean, she's just, she has phenomenal ideas. She's also one of the co-founders of Teach SDGs, which is an empowering project to help teachers understand and be able to teach and implement the sustainable development goals in your classroom. And most and, recently, yeah. she, oh, go ahead. No, no, go, go. You go, you shit, oh. you finish. Most recently, ISTE published her book, Teach Boldly, which really um, helps educators to, to read and learn about students and the design process and making a better future. So her huge focus is on a better world and through our students. 
Oh my gosh, that's great. So Marie just said that her students participated in the goals project the year and it was a great way to kick off the study of the SDGs. In that's case, awesome. And SDGs are the sustainable development goals. I don't know if you said that or not. Um, but what to, you know, to harken back to the larger theme of like the PLN, um, sometimes things can get lost. And so if you have your ear to the ground to what other people in your little group are saying, what other people in your, your network are saying and talking about and looking at, like, then you, you, all these different possibilities, possibilities pop up. And had I not been part of the PLN years ago, again, I might not have gotten as involved in the SDGs as my students and I are. So at Teach SDGs is a great way. That's another great network um, to be a part of. And it's just wonderful when, I can't say it enough, worlds collide. So Marie, I would love for you, if you have a second, um, if you could drop the link, if your students did anything, or if you have a social media thing for your students, for your classroom, I would love to see anything that y'all did through that uh, goals project. And if not, no big deal, um, but we're now a PLN, so I wanna learn. All right, and then next we have Dr. Mary Alice Corinne, which is one of our leadership team members, but she does so much beyond the ISTE Global PLN. And she is a huge advocate for digital citizenship in the classroom and beyond. So um, speaking of PLN, so Mary Alice and I met through, through Twitter and then our PLN evolved and they, we crossed paths in several different PLNs and EduMatch and in the ISTE Global PLN. And we met face-to-face -face several years ago, but a couple, a couple years ago, she had tweeted something about um, being dyslexic and being an advocate for dyslexia. And I'm like, wait, hey, I'm dyslexic too. And so her and I and um, a couple kiddos at ISTE who we had, a, there was a student who did a student at night about dyslexia being her superpower. And um, her name is Ellie Donnelly. She's Jamie Donnelly's daughter and she has a Twitter, I believe it's at Ellie Bean. And so we were able to really talk about like, how has dyslexia impacted us and how has it truly empowered us <laughs> as creative thinkers? And so um, she's amazing. And Margaret, talk a little bit about her DigiSit Summit and some of the awesome opportunities she has to connect and collaborate. Sure, the next slide actually shows, so we just kind of screenshotted the, the top pictures about the, the DigiSit Summit and then the websites there. We're gonna talk about the website with collaboration. But if you go to the next slide, it will show their channel. And it was five days, it was an online summit and it was a five day online summit. Again, much like this global ed conference that you are all participating in, but what was great was that it was student led. It was almost all by students and it was all about digital citizenship. Um, ISTE now has a new initiative uh, called DigiSit Commit and there's going to be some big news that's happening in February. Um, and so to have that summit, to have this, and we have a link to it later, but if you can see, you can see DigiSit Summit Friday, DigiSit Summit Thursday, you can see the full, three to four hour session of these classrooms connecting and, and talking and showing that there's that further collaboration. It's powerful. Um, they have also, Mary Alice, along with I think maybe 16 or 18 other people have written a book called Digit Kids, and it's just been translated into Spanish. Um, and so talk about collaboration, um, this idea of how we're gonna work together to build a better world. Um, and, and these connections came from personal connections. It came from Twitter. We then joined the PLN. Um, Aaron, who's a member of our PLN, has this beautiful blog called Journey. And so that's the article that Mary Alice wrote that Amanda then found. And so again, not to get caught up in the minutia of like all of this wonderful serendipity that exists, but that's the point. That is what Amanda and I really are encouraging you to do is to reach into your network and to see the potential that's there and to really harness and champion each other. Um, so the next slide is also going to talk about a great um, educator who has really reached and leaned into the network. Amanda knows Jody a little bit better than I do, so I'll let Amanda talk about Jody. But I, as a middle school educator, am so just in awe of what Judy's been able to uh, Jody's been able to do. So Jody Dinehammer is an educator from Capel, Texas, and so she's not not far away from me. And she is just phenomenal. She teaches seventh grade science and her whole science curriculum, she has rewrote to really harness the power of the sustainable development goals. 
So one of the things they did last year, which I was just completely in awe, they've always looked at water for Africa, water for Sudan, and they took it a step farther. So their, their kids, they have a sustainability club and they raised money for water wells in Sudan. And so they were able to help put water wells in Sudan, but they, they went that step further with collaboration and they talked to kids and they talked to these teachers in these schools in Sudan and said, what do you need? How can we help make your education better? And the students at, in Capel, Texas were able to create curriculum. So it was student made curriculum that about things they had learned in their different grades and they uploaded it onto iPads and they were able to send those iPads over to Sudan where the students in Sudan were able to learn the content off the iPads and also do the, the projects and the assignments and um, a lot of creating. Jody is an Apple Distinguished Educator and she is a huge advocate for everyone can create. So she has amazing things. Um, if you follow her on Twitter, she's always sharing some something amazing her kids have made or created. And so I just think it's phenomenal that students created a curriculum for other students in Africa. And then those kids are using that curriculum to create and learn. And um, the, this specific tweet that we took a clip of, the, the student in Africa is talking about what she learned from the content that she got on the iPad. And, and so, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and she was our Instagram, Instagram takeover. So you got to yeah. kind of be like behind the scenes of the class and how exciting it is. Yes. So she's phenomenal. And, and to honor time, I just want to make sure, you know, we have about 10 minutes because we want to leave time for, um, for questions if there are any. Uh, and the Digit, Peggy just said the Digit PLN puts out a quarterly newsletter, which again, Peggy, that's exactly uh, what we're trying to, you're speaking, you're, you're, you're affirming our truth that, that connecting with each other through these newsletters is exactly the way to learn more. And that was how I learned about Cone Timmers, um, who is this superstar, superstar um, educator. Um, there are three projects. The Innovation Lab Schools has partnered with Margaret um, Margaret Goodall, um, and they are just wonderful. The uh, Cockham Project is to help teach students in refugee camps, and then you have the Climate Action Project as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jane Goodall. I was like, Margaret, thank you, Lucy, thank you. <laughs> that did sound that right. Was her daughter no. Or not? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I think I was thinking like Margaret. I don't know what I was thinking. All right, so yeah, so Lucy, there you go. There you go. There's the human in the human connection, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so anyway, so Cone Timmers, and I know several students, Eileen can shout out because I think that she knows several educators who were able to do some of Cone Timmers, the projects themselves, um, and be teacher leaders through his initiatives. So if you've never heard of him, please look at what he's doing. And one of our newsletters, um, we highlighted it maybe back in March or April. So that's in our, uh, our, it should be in our wakelet and it's definitely in our archives. And Jane Goodall, oh my goodness, that's gonna yes. be, <laughs> that's gonna go down in history. <laughs> hey, it's okay. We we still aren't in present. Um, but um, he also Cohen also did a video for us. Um, Amanda the, Goodall, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lucy Goodall, Amanda Goodall. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, but he, he was able to share in our ISTE Global PLN Global Collaboration Summit too. So he shared some of his resources. Um, but again, amazing projects. If, if you have the, the desire and you're inspired to, to teach kids online that are in refugee camps in Africa, please go to his page, look him up on Twitter and, and sign up because he's always looking for teachers. And then he's also looking for classrooms to do some of these innovative lab school projects and the climate action projects. So, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so connection opportunities, which then leads to collaboration. Right. And so we mentioned this earlier, um, the Digital Citizenship Institute is Mary Alice's, Dr. Mary Alice's current, her, her company. It's so powerful, publishes books, 
um, has those digital summits. I, we link the YouTube channel as well as just the website. You can sign up. They have in-person summits. That was the first time that they had a digital summit, but they have uh, in-person summits um, that allow schools to put on student-led summits. And so you can have student panelists, you can have experts come in. Mary Alice is just so supportive and wants what is best for the children so that they can be leaders. Um, we probably are not going to have time, but definitely check out their YouTube channel. And like I said, I think the next slide is going to be about up sooner brand, I think, um, or it's going to be blank because it didn't save. Well, the next slide is um, about up sooner brand. Um, she is an, and, and she, like I said, was willing to take on these, my students who have the upstander brand, who have this amazing organization that, uh, tries to promote goodness in the world. And, um, and so they were able to speak for about an hour. They were keynoters themselves. And that was just wonderful at the summit. Um, so definitely check out the Digit Institute. And the upstandard brand. And then um, we have also just put some some tools that that we use in, in our classrooms and on our campuses. So one of the tools is Go Bubble, and it is designed um, by an ex police officer in the UK. And it's how to keep kids, it's a platform, a social media platform that keeps kids safe. So um, if your school districts are, hesitant to to let you have students on social media sharing their projects as far as twitter and instagram and a way that they can collaborate and connect with other students is through go bubble and uh, henry is just absolutely wonderful and if you ever have a question you can reach out you're in control you put in student the information so everything is really safe and they won an award i forget recently they won an award um, for the safety the online safety so that's great um, so another one that another organization that can help those first connections is an organization called Beluga. Um, and its aim is to try to get you to have relationships, to have those human connections and to do deep dives um, with other classrooms around the world. Uh, they had some really new and exciting stuff that's launching, if not hasn't already launched, will be launching soon. And so definitely sign up with them, go to the website, look at how they can connect with other connect you with other classrooms in a safe way, but then also um, learn these deep dives with these lessons. And what's great about Beluga is they have these action projects. So as you continue to learn um, with the other classes, you earn um, um, uh, not money. Impact but, points, I believe. Impact points, yes. That then your classroom can pull um, and you can buy X amount of iPads for an art for a school that needs it, or you can buy um, whatever that school would need, and your work building relationships provides that for the other classrooms. And the the founders of Beluga are just ordinary people. They're just amazing entrepreneurs, and uh, we had the opportunity to meet with Evan, one of the founders. Well, actually, two of the founders, but Evan more intensely at ISTE this year, and. He was able to share with us some of the stories about the impact points that students had donated. And so students can donate, like Margaret said, to offer something up to another classroom. And so Beluga is paying for that. So say I had 200 impact points in my classroom, that turns into $200 that Beluga is putting towards something. So they're, they're, they're taking the money and, and really spending it in good ways. So he told me that a classroom had donated for water wells in, in Africa and really to see that impact follow through as they learned about the water cycle and water resources and um, drought and then be able to use their action or their impact points to, to do something good with what they had learned. And I thought that was pretty amazing. And then other tools that just everyday tools that we we use and connect with are Google Hangout, Zoom, like we're on now. Um, Skype appear in is a is a quick connection. It's I will say that using tools like appear in that are web based is sometimes iffy because anyone can jump on that link. Where Google Hangout and Zoom and Skype are more personalized link where you're not going to get outsiders jumping on. 
And like Margaret had mentioned before, our wonderful PLM leader from Australia, who has the most beautiful accent in the world, <laughs> is yes, Anne Murchison. And she did a presentation earlier today where she talked about the tools for global collaboration. So make sure to check out her recording. And I mean, she's phenomenal. So I know she shared lots of great stuff. And if you have not signed up, obviously, if you're here, you're here for a reason. But if you have not signed up for Lucy's, for the uh, for Lucy and Steve's Global Education Conference, or just in general, everything that they push out, make sure you do that. That's the PLN. So we started by talking about the ISTE PLN. Um, we want to make sure that we have time for questions and comments if there's anything else. But ultimately, it's going to cycle back to the idea of just human connections, just mm -hmm. basic human connections. And you can't you do so much more when you do it together. Absolutely. So, so we appreciate your time, your understanding of whatever is happening with my internet, that it will not, oh, and look, right when we're done, <laughs> it connects. That is hilarious. So now I could go into present mode and you could see the slides as a full screen. That, of course, that happened. <laughs> we created but we appreciate your understanding that, <laughs> My internet was not wanting to connect to Google Slides. So we probably now look, Margaret, your the slide that wasn't there is there. So Margaret I talked about standard brand and Ed Corpse. And so here's the slide that was not loading. <laughs> And that is just, I, I was hesitant. I added this last minute because I was hesitant. I wanted to make sure that I stress that Upstream Your Brain has not done global collaboration yet. But the whole point of our presentation is the connection that then leads to the collaboration potential. And so um, this is our student run company. Again, it's about being a good person. We just launched a board game um, that is completely student run, uh, student built, student designed, student created and it's for $12. And so they are just so excited to be able to share the point and the power of being a good person that um, it's kind of contagious. And we might not be on engineering brightness level yet, but this idea is um, just, you know, just there. Marie has shared a Flipgrid, her Flipgrid um, from the Global Goals Project. Um, can, Amanda, since you are sharing your screen, do you want to click on that or I can click on it? Do you mind, Marie, if we share just really quickly and just look at the Flipgrid, how they, um, and if you don't, no big deal. Um, Steve and Lucy, I know that this is the time that y'all might want to pop in and facilitate questions or we can just kind of, you know. Be you a know, big, we're going to need to, <laughs> we're going to need to break in about four minutes so that we can, people can take a break before the next set of sessions. But we'll we'll get you going for a few minutes here, and then maybe at five of we'll t we'll turn it off. Sure. Okay. Sounds again, good. You guys are awesome. So if you have a question, you can put it in the chat, or you can also click on the Q and A function. Although no one's done that, and it's easier if it's in the chat. Is there anybody you don't like? I mean, is there anybody that's not awesome? Um, Steve, ex I think he, we have met in person. You know that I am legit, and you know that. <laughs> So don't even start that. Not okay. Everybody is great. And that's the power. You have to champion each other, you know? Well, if they're not awesome, more. we make sure to make them awesome. No, just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, through these PLNs, we have just found so many amazing people that it's hard to, to find someone that you're like, uh, yeah, you know? Like everyone has something to offer. And like I said, I've just learned so much about education in different parts of the world that I would have never been exposed to. Um, I not, you know, got on Twitter and started connecting with people. It is a really interesting moment, isn't it? So, so Marie shared her flip grid. Marie, we, if you don't mind, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and put um, your flip grid in our presentation and just say Marie from Global EdCon. So look at us building our PLN as we go. Um, I'll put that in there. Steve, I know we have to go in a second, um, but this is fabulous. Oh my um, gosh. Oh, so cool. So hey, what yeah. I know is if I ever am with you and you say, oh, that was really good. And it wasn't fabulous, it wasn't awesome. I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta up my game. <laughs> you know? If we can just be authentic and real with each other, then I think that's what's important. So, yes. There's, yes. there's a really serious question here, right? <clears throat> so there's, there's all this connectivity, which is dramatically changing things. 
but the history of education has always cycled, right? I mean, I can remember, you know, progressive schools and, and really um, good thinking in the early 70s, and then it kind of cycles out, and then you get like, you know, there was uh, open source software and Seymour Papert, and then there was Web 2.0, and then now there's, you know, VR, and it's like, okay, we go through these cycles, and we have these really amazing examples of people. The internet's connected us, but is it actually possible to to change education, or do you just sort of bright spots in a system that's largely designed to kind of create conformity? And so you say, okay, so can you really reform, or do you just highlight all the great good stuff and hope that people kind of navigate to it on their own? I think it's like, you know, have you seen that YouTube video of the dancing man and he's dancing by himself and then a couple of people join him and then everybody's joining him dancing. I think that's what it is, except on such a larger scale because the education system in the world is humongous. But I think the more that we, we highlight these people and inspire others to, to truly transform education and get away from the, the compliance of what, especially in the United States, what our states have limited us to and say, you have, you have to do this, you have to do it this way. And to truly get kids and teachers, and more importantly, teachers and administrators really thinking outside the box. And I think it starts with sharing what other people are doing to inspire that change across the board. I think it's a, a slow process, but I, I do think it's possible. Awesome. Okay, we're probably at a closing moment. Thank you so much. No, thank you. And, and thank you all for understanding whatever was happening with Google for me. <laughs> and Hannah, and I know Steve is going to cut in a second. Hannah, I see your question. I'm putting that in question and comments in the slide. So if we want to talk about it, if we want to, you know, just make sure we honor that as well. So just don't forget to connect with others, champion others' efforts, and keep yourself open for ways for collaboration. So, and Marie is asking for the presentation link again. Uh, okay, again. Sure. I think Margaret shared it up in the chat and yeah. she'll, she'll drop it one more time for you, Marie. Sure. Um, okay. So thank you guys so much for being here. We are so grateful to be a part of your PLN. Okay. And we appreciate you all. And have a good night if we're still live. Yes, we're still recording, so have a good night.